Hello everybody and welcome back to Game Talk. This is our third installment of the Bioshock Talk, where we talk about Bioshock Infinite and its DLCs with Ryan. Uh, uh, um, it's okay. That's what I get called. <laughs> okay. I, I, I was looking at your, your Skype thing. It's okay. Like, yes, that makes sense. I shouldn't make those mistakes. I've only known you for 10 years. 10 years? You're... 2008. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right. All right, anyway. Bioshock Infinite. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the DLCs and a bit of time talking about the game itself for context and other purposes. But this is so, going to be an extended episode, so grab your popcorn, put on those really high socks that you love to wear while you watch Netflix, and get ready for a ride. Yes, it's going to be the ride of your life, and uh, don't forget to buckle those seatbelts because you got to click it or you're going to get a ticket. So, Hunter, what is what is Bioshock Infinite? So cringing from that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Bioshock Infinite was definitely the to me. It was definitely the game that no one expected because we thought that we were all done with Rapture. And, and we were done with Rapture, at least minutely, till we found out about the DLC. Anyways, um, no, because I, I remember seeing it when it, like the big press conference that they had, that uh, John Levin had, and they're like, hey, uh, we're bringing Bioshock back, but we're not going to be in Rapture anymore. Set of characters, like all this stuff. And it it pretty much was a new game to me. With sequels, it's like, oh, it's a new game, but it's not a new ideal. Bioshock Infinite, it was like, it's a new place, it's a new... Like, the only thing that was the same was that you you have, like, you know, genetic powers, and that's really it. Like, a, a lot of new they stuff. Kept, they kept the general idea and the core, the core gameplay, and uh, then they just changed up everything else. And that was one of the coolest things about it. Cause you, like you were saying, you don't see that in very many sequels. Uh, I, I remember I was super hyped for the game, but I, I, I think you, you don't remember how like the game, the game was fun, but up until you get to the final act, it's just a fun game. Like, it's the it's the final act that really drove the game to being what it was. The thing, and I I do love it. I love the because no one expects that. the The thing that I love about it is because it mixes the sci fi fantasy world with this steampunk kind of like old world court culture and that's what it did from the start but then once you figure in the fact of like different dimensions and you know the different realities and everything you start to realize that in a way the genre of this story is more than like three or four genres just put into one and i'm talking book genres gaming genres are a mess of their own they are uh genres and bioshock it all started as kind of like a sci-fi horror game uh horror elements we let, let's say um but then it i'm really surprised that they were able to bring it to what it ended up being which was very complex uh for a game plot at least it definitely, it was, and I, I understood it immediately because I have read and, you know, a lot of stories about different dimensions, different realities, like all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure other people have too, so they kind of understood it right off the bat. But a lot of people that played Bioshock Infinite, when they finished it, they they just couldn't grasp what was going on. Like, like what do you mean that he's Comstock and he's Comstock. What, what does that mean? And then especially with the downloadable contents, 
whenever uh, burial at C2 and it's like one of the Elizabeths die and then they're like, oh, hey, we told you that this was going to happen if you die here. And so this is your fault. Like that confused me even because I, I didn't we're, go ahead. We're getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves here. Let's uh, let's keep talking about just the just Bioshock Infinite, uh, giving people a little bit more background on uh, the plot. Like I if you could you. boil it down. You. Um. What, boil down the plot of Infinite? We saw what happened with the other games. <laughs> uh, we saw what happened with the other games, so now we know not to do that. <laughs> All right, so essentially, I'm just going to talk about the end, because that's, that's the thing. Um, yeah. You find out that uh, Booker DeWitt, the character that you've been playing this whole time, is also the... Um, antagonist, the main antagonist of the whole game, who is Father Comstock, you're both the same people. The difference is that Comstock accepted a baptism after the Battle of Wounded Knee, and then Burker DeWitt didn't. But then there's also an infinite number of DeWitts that did, and an infinite number of Comstocks that did accept it. So it's it's back and forth between it where there's like all of these other um, dimensions and everything. But then you also find out that um, um, bring us the girl, wipe away the debt was actually just like your booker giving away his daughter when she was a baby to these random people, like just to get his debt away or his debt away, like racing debts. And then he tries to take that back. And whenever the Lutesses, or the Lutess, I'll put it that way, because I'm pretty sure there was just Lady Lutess, like the brother showed up later after they developed this interdimensional machine that they can go back and forth between dimensions uh, and time, it seems. So it's, it's kind of like the, the portal gun from Rick and Morty. Like, essentially, but way bigger and way like that. Essentially, whenever they were taking Elizabeth through the portal, um, her pinky got cut off. Or one of her fingers. I think it's her pinky. But, um, well, so one of part of Elizabeth was in the 19, 1912, right? Uh, yeah, I believe it's around that time. Around least. that time. Was back then. And then the other part of Elizabeth was in New York at that time, or, yeah, in New York. And so the universe didn't like that, so, like, everything started to freak out and, like, get upset and everything. So Elizabeth, she didn't necessarily have powers. She just had a... She was in two different dimensions at once, so she had the ability to essentially control all of the dimensions because of that. And... There you go. That's like a summed up end ending of it. All right. That's. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about Bioshock Infinite itself, or can we go on to its DLCs? I do want to talk about um, the one of the other. I feel like she's an antagonist, um, kinda. Um, but it's going to be. Uh, I always forget their names when I'm about to want to talk. About. Um. Daisy Fitzroy, Daisy, the uh, leader of the Vox Populi. So Daisy Fitzroy as a character to me was one of my favorites of the entire game. It abs absolutely she was because all she was was she was tied up in this, you know, kind of dystopia that that city became and she stood up and pretty much was just trying to do what was right for her people like the whole time and i absolutely applaud that like i think she was a character and you I, go ahead i i feel a little bit differently you, about really uh as far as the, the characters that aren't the uh, um, 
the Latrices. I'm pro I I mispronounce things all the time, so don't don't be mad at me. Uh, Comstock, Booker, and Elizabeth. Uh, all the other characters were pretty much meaningless. Definitely after you played the DLC, they they just existed as pawns for the uh, the main bits to to be able to be to do their thing. They don't. They weren't real. They didn't. They, they didn't mean anything. Everything that the, all their struggles and everything didn't matter. Yeah, that's, at least that's, that's how true. that's how I that's saw true. it. I, I get what you're saying. Um. So yeah, if if we're yeah, let's go ahead and move to the downloadable content. There is okay. so much so more to let's talk, talk about. Let's talk about everybody's favorite downloadable content for the Bioshock series. Uh, cl cloud fighting Sky One. I like it. I actually like that DLC. Just I want to breeze over it real quick. You go it, ahead uh, because I didn't play that. One. <laughs> it's just uh, um, like an arena shooter. So it's you versus a whole bunch of people with Bioshock weapons and stuff. Why well, didn't? Buy and it. it's not like actual <laughs> multiplayer. It's PVE. Yeah, and it just it just extended the game, like the gameplay, so you'd keep playing it, and it, it worked. It was pretty fun. That's I don't like downloadable contents that I feel like I got enough of in. Like I feel like I feel like as far as combat like that, I got enough of it in the main game. So I definitely am not going to buy a downloadable content that is the same well, thing. I I bought the collection. Oh okay. The the what? So I got I never bought any of the DLC for Bioshock Infinite. I just bought the Bioshock collection when it came out. Wait and, a second. Uh, got it all for free. Wait, that means that I have it too because I bought the collection. Oh. Oh I'm, well, then you have it. I should go see what that's all about then. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty fun. Uh, but let's talk. Let's talk about the actual DLC that people wanted us to talk about. And by people, I mean specifically us. Uh, Barry, let's see part one. I think that's a good place to start. That was my stomach. I have an eight today. <laughs> so Barry, let's see. Part one starts with um, starts with Elizabeth coming to Booker in Rapture. Yes, which was uh, kind of mind blowing. I love first. seeing the city in its highlight. Oh, that was so amazing beautiful it was it was really nice i it was a side of rapture that we haven't seen yet but it also confused me for a while because i didn't know what was what was to expect because it's like the city is it are we just gonna wait for it to all go bad in a day or two or what's going on here then um after some random gameplay and with flirting with some guy for a ticket or whatever. My favorite character returns, and oh, does he not disappoint? Sander Cohen. And ah, uh, yes. That he, whole that whole section was very. There was something. So here's something that that scene showed to me, and I don't know if they were doing it intentionally or not, but that scene showed that Sander Cohen Have you had breakfast? Not yet. Not yet, huh? Did you eat a breakfast sandwich? Yeah. I'll be back in a few minutes. Alright. What did I miss? Hello? Am I alone now? Hello? Dylan? Yeah. Okay. Are you going to edit that part out? Yeah. Okay. So do you want to do the clap again? No. Okay. <laughs> and... no, I, I watched the whole videos all the way through. Oh, okay. I got you. Then uh, what was I saying? <laughs> I don't know. All right. And I'll... We're talking about Sander Cohen. Right. Jumping back to Sander Cohen in one, three... Uh, yeah, no, it shows that he was not Adam 
crazy or Adam's sickness, whatever you want to call it, was happening in Bioshock 1. Because, you know, everybody thought, oh, this, this guy is crazy from the Adam. That's why he's wanting these, like, sculptures of his dead, you know, of his dead, um, what do you, like, protege, uh, protégés, yeah, whatever you say. Yeah, that it. works. Um, everyone thought he was crazy. But watching this, it's way before any of that happens. And he still acts and thinks the same way. Like, completely. Well, it wasn't... It wasn't way before. It was it, it was like a a couple of weeks before. A couple of weeks, dude. That was it, wait, no, that was at least a year or two because that was before fifty nine, wasn't it? The okay, uh, we're gonna I'm gonna jump a little bit ahead right here, but you end the DLC yeah. with starting the rebellion. Yeah. But they hadn't done the bombing thing yet at, at on fifty nine or at fifty nine when the the new yeah, year they thing. They, they don't. Did. They were well. They were they were talking about it. Yeah, they were definitely talking. So about it. it was it was right about to happen. But anyway, that's not it's not too important. Um, I guess what uh, I'm getting at is I don't think that Sander Cohen ever got Adam Sickness. I don't think that he was crazy. I think that. He was just crazy, like straight out. Like, I think that he always was that. And that's why he came down to Rapture. So he could live out all of his crazy fantasies. Exactly. But I do believe he ended up augmenting it with Adam Cygnus in uh, the first game. Like, he he was already crazy to begin with. And then he just got crazier. Did he have... Uh, Oh, he, he did use the teleportation plasma, didn't he? Yep. Okay. Never mind. I was trying to think if he but, had ever used a plasma. I guess he but, did. But uh, besides, besides the elements where you got to see uh, Rapture, the whole first DLC up until its ending wasn't really much. It was a, it was a huge blast of nostalgia because you're back in Rapture and you're fighting Splicers. But it was really uh, the the ending of the like the whole arc where you're trying to find this little girl. Uh, the little girl turns out to be well, an alternative Elizabeth. Yeah, I guess. Um, okay, I, I'm pretty sure this is an Elizabeth who got her head cut off, or no. <laughs> How do Okay. I know it's confusing. So, it really is. So like the part between the end of the first one and the beginning of the second one, it's really confusing. Like the parts that I know is I keep cutting you off. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Here's how I understand it. Sure. The first there there's two Elizabeths. Well, three if we want to get technical. The first Elizabeth was in um Columbia. And she got her head cut off, whereas the the Elizabeth we know got her pinky cut off. Yeah. Uh, she got decapitated. And then that Comstock, um, <laughs> that Comstock g- went to Rapture because reasons. Uh, he was working with, um, what's the scientist's name in Rapture? I forgot. Who, Shuchan? Yeah. Working with him to get... If he was working with the Latrices and him Lutesses? to be able to get to Rapture, Lutesses, the Lutesses? Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, and they they got there, and then Elizabeth found him, and Elizabeth is all like, "Ah, we're gonna help you," and then she lets him die at the end. Now. That is the the little sister who you've been looking for the whole time, uh, which is the alternative Elizabeth, uh, is gone. Okay, she's she is off doing rapture things with Adam and Big Daddies. Uh, so the next game starts, or the next DLC starts, part two, and it turns out the Big Daddy that Elizabeth let kill Comstock who was pretending to be Booker, 
kills that version of Elizabeth. But she, Elizabeth, because she's, I guess, in control, she knows everything that's happening to all of her alternative selves. Right. Um, she has to go back there and save that little sister for reasons. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to do that, she had to give up all her power. Which she she can no longer see any of her alternatives. She's just a regular person in Rapture now, and that that starts the second DLC. <laughs> do you, what do you, what do we want to talk about with the second DLC? Where do you begin with the second DLC? <laughs> That's it tied together everything in a perfect little bow, and then it handed it to you in a package that said. Here you go. Enjoy the mind melt in ten minutes. And and that is the problem with that DLC. There's a problem with it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Whenever you do that, you get rid. Okay. So say I create something. Okay. Right. If if I force you to do my interpretation, then it's lesser. You're trying, it's a lesser creation. You're trying but to say like, that if I if you leave it open to people's minds, then it's that's better. what I loved about Bioshock Infinite's ending, because it was very open ended. Okay, it was, it was you. There could have been anything that you it it was super open ended, but because of the way. Uh, the second one goes, you play as Elizabeth in the second one and you go through it and um, eventually you go back to Columbia. You Andrew Ryan hates you. Um, <laughs> you lift. Uh, what is it? Fontaine? Uh, it's a mall. Um, it's a mall complex. Well, I was just trying to think of the name of it. It's like Fontaine, whatever. You lift that out of the bottom of the ocean using uh the stuff that makes columbia float uh lutes and particle or whatever yes and that if you didn't do that nothing would have happened with um rapture with bioshock one or rapture rapture would have been a thing it would it, nothing would have happened but because you lifted atlas uh frank fontaine out of this prison you're the one you that caused started, it. You started the fall of Rapture. <laughs> and I really I really like that. <coughs> but the obviously you go through a little bit more, you find the little sister. Uh Frank Fontaine ends up betraying you and he kills you. Because of course he does. But there's no more Elizabeths. There's no more time loops. Her death in that one closed the loop. There's no more infinite universes. There's no more anything. So whenever she died there, it's basically it's basically saying uh, the game series was a loop, was a circle. Uh, but because of the whole timeline now, it's Columbia happens. Um the whatever DLCs happen, uh, barrel LC DLCs. Okay. And then Bioshock one happens. And the only ending to Bioshock one is the good ending. Yeah, that's true. So it took, it took a, a loop and it closed it. And I mean, I, I, I still think it was really cool, but I, it's like at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. That's, that's, you know, that's different opinion. It's still, it's still like my favorite DLC and my favorite game series, but, uh, it just, it closed, it closed the loop and I don't know. Well, what do you think about it? I've talked enough. I, I, I liked it. Like I, I, because it still left a lot of stuff open for me still. Like, we still don't know fully how Big Daddies were made. 
like we we get the basics of it kind of but we we still don't know how they like meld those things like the bodies into the suits or like that's song, true songbird like what the heck was was songbird like it we i get it like how they you know it was the line in the pause thing that's why he protects her but what was Songbird made out of? Like, I I feel like the things that needed to stay open stayed open. But, I'll, like, I'll, I'll use this for example. Because I always wondered why Daisy would have tried to kill um, um, that guy's kid. Dang it. Fink. I, Jeremiah Fink. I wondered why she would have tried to kill his kid especially with the like the morals that I had already come to find from her. And then we get it explained like, hey, the Lutess is literally like said to do this. And hey, you're like Elizabeth is going to kill you for doing this. She literally did it for like the good of Columbia for what she was believing. And we would have never known that without some of the loose ends being tied up. It's like uh, I have very mixed feelings about the whole the whole thing, like I'm talking yeah. Um, because I appreciate it. I appreciate seeing what the creators thought, but it's also like sometimes I had a different mindset and it, it just, it enriched the characters differently for me. And then it just like strips that away, <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it doesn't really matter all that much. It was an excellent DLC and you need to play it if you have not. I, I agree. Def- definitely play Heck, play the whole series if you haven't. If you haven't played Infinite and the downloadable contents, just just go get the collection. But uh, anyways, we are not endorsed I, I, by whoever. I, uh, who is it? Two two K or two K uh, games. Whoever, <laughs> unless you want to endorse us, I would, I'll take that paycheck. Never going to happen. <laughs> but okay. Um, uh, I do, do want to mention yes, one more thing before you mention your one more thing. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth in the DLCs sucks. I I, agree. I hate her characters. She, in the first DLC, she won't shut up. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, hey, you should be going this other direction. Even though, you know, the game, one of my favorite parts of Bioshock and Bioshock 2 was exploring everything, finding all the audio logs. But it's like, I don't want to get nagged at for looking for stuff. <laughs> and then she, uh, as a playable character, she was she's so weak <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you collected all that stuff for um comstock or booker whoever right you want to associate um him with in your brain head uh even though it's comstock you, you don't get any of that in the second dlc yeah because it's like you're you're so used to booker catch booker catch <laughs> And then in this one, it's like, wow, I only have one of these left. Could really use another one of myself <laughs> right now. Oh, yeah. So what were you going to say? I don't remember. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but uh, I think that's it for this. Uh... This series. Yeah, actually, this, this is it for On Bioshock. Bioshock. Yeah. Um, so comment below if you want a mini episode about the Bioshock book. It oh yeah, Reddit. the Bioshock book. If you want it, it. I'll, let have to, us know. I'll have to read a synopsis synops because it's been so long. I, I remember it because I still have a copy of Lane Reddit. Uh I wanna I wanna announce two things really quick for okay. those of you who have gotten this far. Yes, please. Uh those of you who like listening to Hunter and I talk, uh, sometime soon, I hope, <laughs> we're going to start up uh, Dangcast. Um, oh, that's It's something right. that we wanted right. to start up for a while, but it will basically, uh, it'll be, I'm, I'm thinking we'll just talk about like maybe a single topic or a couple of topics or a general topic that devolves into a couple of different topics. You guys can and, comment as we talk and you can be like, how dare you say that? And I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> exactly. You can make fun of us for the way we we speak, and we will just be like, "That's rude, dude." Yeah. Why, that are, you, why are you Why are you like this? And the second thing I'm announcing is uh, something that probably won't happen for a very long time. Um, as a matter of fact, I have no no business announcing it, but I like it, and I'm pretty excited about it. I'm writing something new as far as like a, a teaser of sorts because I don't have the budget to actually produce the actual thing. And uh, like a, what did you say? Like a screenplay or something. <laughs> yes, yeah, like a screenplay or something. And uh, the, the version that I have to write legally can't be about what I want it to be about, but it's going to be about that. So shh, don't tell the FCC. But it's going to be I, something along the lines of the fall of Rapture. Ooh. 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 And it's going to take a, a pretty big budget to to get it going for, you know, special effects and everything. But Didn't they try to do a something movie? You have to look for. They did, but no one ever did it. But I'm thinking, you know what would be cool? If you took uh, Rapture uh, before it fell or as it's falling uh didn't didn't do anything with the main plot made up your own kind of newish story with uh, similar elements and um made it into a tv show hmm okay yeah because that's interesting movies don't have enough time <laughs> no they never do but that's i'm i'm currently working on writing a like i don't know 30 minutes tops on uh proof of concept and see what what goes from there all right well that's so, that sounds great dude i'm uh... those are some those are some cool things that uh people who enjoy listening to this have to look forward to and we will see you in the next so whatever uh one there's another episode of this well we'll just see him in the next dang cast then <laughs> oh yeah bye guys Bow shock oh, out. Um, sorry. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. <laughs>